edge of this where these are roots now that are exposed and Okay, now I'm going to go back up to this part of the drawing. And there's a, uh, I love this, these kind of areas in the woods. Um, if you're a hiker, you'll know what I'm talking about, where you'll just hit like these areas where it's all this dense undergrowth of um, uh, ground pine and, and club moss and all kinds of interesting patterns and forms. Um, and they tend to be down around the bases of trees. And this, being a birch, has a different kind of root pattern. I want to indicate that some of that root pattern is exposed. I'll tighten that up in the drawing. Whereas with the conifer, I don't really care. The conifer is all going to be in shadow. And I really want that to be a very primal shape. So I'm just going to lay in this part of the drawing with heavy black. And this is where I'm going to pay particular attention once I get into the finer work to doing uh, some more precise fern patterns and build on what we were, what I was showed you and we talked about with that last uh, sketchier drawing. Okay, now I'm going to bang this in, and I want a big area of black down here. Keith, how much of what you kind of know about all the the forest and stuff is from research, and how much of it is just from walking through the woods and hiking like you said? Those are good questions. You know, a, a a lot of it comes out of walking around and just enjoying being out in the woods. I mean, one of the things I did uh, with many of you, uh, Center for Cartoon Studies. Uh, is uh, back in um, the fall, we took a trip up uh, Mount Escutney and wandered around the, the top for about three or four hours. And part of it was I was just hoping to steep some of you in uh, experiencing that, that, uh, that aspect of nature, just sort of wandering around, looking at what's there. So a lot of it for me, long term, is you know, a lifetime growing up in Vermont of enjoying those kind of wanderings. The research part comes... Um, Twofold, you know, I do read about this stuff, and I always have. Um, I am not a naturalist. I'm not even a layman naturalist, but I read books about it because I want to understand what it is I found in the woods or, or you know, that sort of thing. And uh, part of it, too, is just sort of training my eye. Um, when we wander around the woods when we're kids, it's all untrained observation, which often can be far more observant than trained observation. Um, but reading about it and uh, making sure that I've got a reference shelf of, you know, books on, um, uh, you know, the woodland areas, uh, both the, the fauna and the flora, is to help me identify things I spot that I'm not sure what they are. And if I can just get a sense of what they are or what they were, um, I'll pay closer attention to them next time I'm out there. But it primarily comes from uh, Gary Paul observation, going out in the woods, walking around, which is a great thing to do whatever your walk of life. Uh, particularly when the weather's sweet. So, um, but for me, uh, it also comes out of, um, I mean, part of the fun of, of hiking and walking around the woods is just sort of drinking in all these patterns and textures that are out there. Uh, that, that's a big part of the pleasure of it. Okay, and I'm laying in now with a, I'm still using my rough brush, but it is so saturated with ink that it's starting to get its old point back, okay? Um, so now I'm able to go in and do a bit more detail work. Um, it's not going to be as fine as the detail work I'll be able to do with my better brush, but I'm, I'm getting, uh, I'm at a good groove with this brush. Okay, and now I think what I'm going to do is go in with a couple of pen tips. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, the narrower pen tip and then go to the broader G nib. Uh, and what I'm going to focus on is this lower part of the drawing right now. Uh, two reasons I'm focusing on this part. This is going to be the focus of attention, so I don't want to lose myself in detail on the upper part of the drawing right now because that, that is going to be incidental rather than the focus. And the ink is so dry up, I mean so wet up here that I will smear, smear it badly <laughs> if I try to do anything up there. So I'm going to focus down here right now. Now, all kinds of textures in nature. Um, I, I started by banging in the obvious ones, but uh, the forms that you're usually going to find on the surface of these kind of areas tend to be things like uh, fungus, mushrooms, um, uh, fallen branches, leaves, and so on. So I'm going to lay those in first with my pen 
uh, not in any great detail, but just as sort of a benchmark to myself of don't clutter this area, don't lose, you know, doing something here. Uh, there is a type of mushroom that grows uh, in parts of Vermont that has this weird kind of honeycomb shape to it. Uh, it's actually the gills of the mushroom, um, which usually in standard mushrooms are underneath the cap. They're sort of exposed, so they look like sponges. I want to get a couple of those in, and then I want to get a couple of traditional mushroom shapes in, and I'm drawing the caps. And again, these are just markers to myself right now. Uh, okay, uh, down here I've got some roots, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time with texture on those, so what I'm going to do is I'm working with, and I'm trying to draw with my wrist rather than with my fingers at this stage, so that these lines all go in a single direction, and I'm dropping them into these roots into the shadows. And you can see with this pen tip, I can spread it really wide and get some thick lines. I can go really fine. Depends how much weight I put on the tip, how much pressure I'm putting on the stroke of the pen. But I'm getting what I want here. Okay. And I want this to be a little lighter into here. All right, now I want to start getting into the moss textures, and because I'm going to do the lower moss textures with my better brush, I'm just going to focus on what's happening up around these roots right now, and this is where I'll work with my pen. And as I've said before, it's all about, I'm not, it's not like I'm drawing moss. I, I'm not worried about the detail of moss. I'm just loosely creating a different texture form than exists anywhere else on the drawing. And I'm not going to worry if I get blobs of ink that just becomes part of the texture. Again, it's not about control per se. The control that I'm applying is where I choose to place these textures, but I'm giving myself plenty, plenty of room for play and sort of enjoying how the accidents shape the piece. There's a certain zen to it, if you will, not to be pretentious. Okay, we've got a whole clutch of, like, club moss in through here. Everybody knows what club moss is? No, no club moss. Uh, here's a piece of paper. Club moss is what you'll find if you looked really close at it. Uh, it's called club moss because it tends to be a narrow, furry stalk like this. And the top of the, each individual shoot looks like almost like a little Christmas tree. It's a little block of moss. And, you'll, and when there's a carpet of this stuff, club moss is incredibly soft and luxuriant to walk around barefoot on. And, um, but this is what you're finding when you look really closely at it. They look like little, you know, vague Christmas trees, sort of. Uh, ground pine uh, is different. Ground pine will have um, shoots that come up like this. It tends to grow at the top up this way. This stuff has all sorts of nice little vegetative hairs on it. And ground pine will spread with underground uh, growths that are like root systems, and it'll spring up a brand new outgrowth over here. Ground pine can spread over a huge area um, really quickly. <laughs> this stuff takes off. Once the spring hits and the snow is melted, th this stuff just takes off. Okay, that's my little crash course. Um, so those are the kind of textures. So I'm not going to worry about drawing the individual, you know, clubs and so on, but if I just create a pattern that looks like soft moss and that kind of you know, form at the top of some of them, it'll have that, that feel that I'm looking for. Now, uh, you will not, 